friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about so you want to be a guitar tech because I've gotten questions about that and about people being curious about how to get into that and uh, also you know what it's what it's really like. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, while you're thinking about it go down in the corner and subscribe and if you've been watching the show for a while I would appreciate it if you went to askzack.com. We've got a store there. You can pick up a mug or a t-shirt. And also I have, uh, you know, tip jar information in the description. So if that's the way you want to do it. So thank you. All right. First, some, some old business. Um, on the JV Telecaster episode, which was last week's, uh, I ended up writing a, a much bigger article than I had originally envisioned. And, uh, and that was because John Jorgensen ended up providing fantastic photos of his JV Telecaster. And then I had uh, clips that I got from the uh, Desert Rose Band fan club, uh, the guy that runs that site. And uh, yeah, so I ended up with clips of him playing and his guitar. And then also I took my JV guitar apart and posted photos to help you guys in vetting or, or looking at JV guitars and knowing what things should look like. Like the fact that JVs come with split shaft pots, you know, even the Telecasters and, uh, you know, that's good information to have and the kind of markings to see on the, on the neck and the body and, uh, yeah, what, what, what the parts should look like. So anyway, uh, also, uh, on the, this Paisley guitar that I was playing, uh, I have uh, removed the, the La Brea pickups from it and put back the originals. And there was nothing wrong with the La Breas. It was just I missed the original pickups. And, uh, and because that's what was uh, put in the guitar originally and when you know Bill Crook put, put it together, that's what he envisioned for it. And I, I missed them. And uh, especially that, uh, that neck pickup, uh, the adder is really cool. And, the, and the, the Peter Florence bridge pickup. And you know both of them I know are no longer made. And, and such but they're uh, they're fun so anyway also on the string front uh, I have removed the pure nickel strings from my old 67 and uh, and not because I don't like them but with that it's that I have a bunch of strings that I have already and so I really don't want to invest more money in strings right now so what I'm continuing to use is either the Diadario 9 5 through 44 or I'm using a custom set that I made up, uh, you know, a couple years ago that I still have some sets of uh, Ernie Ball strings. And that's what I have on this guitar. And it's 10, 13, 15, 24, 32, 42. So there you have it. All right. So uh, one other thing, I guess uh, on, on the opening, you know, kind of loop that I was playing over uh, just the, the chords, I was playing in, in B flat was using both pickups and uh, was using this kind of chord shape. So you have this kind of uh, A flat major seven kind of thing. And then a uh, B flat you know, dominant seven. Going back and forth, then you have a, a C minor uh, C minor seven, and then you have the kind of Hendrixy chord that I'm hammering off on. So it's so that's uh, 
that's that. All right, so on to, so you want to be a guitar tech. So, uh, you know, I've kind of hit upon some of this in my uh, a, a day as Brad Paisley's guitar tech, you know, past episode. But just to kind of get a little more in depth, um, so one, you know, I, you know, I had a degree in business, and uh, you know, Brad graduated a year ahead of me at Belmont University. We both graduated with BBAs, Bachelor of Business Administration degrees, with an emphasis in music business. And I had no training as a tech, and uh, so basically, I had a lot of on-the-job training with that, and. Uh, you know, with, with the questions that I've gotten about this, I kind of wanted to address some things in general about being a guitar tech. And I think one of them is you really need to ask yourself some serious questions before you, in, you know, endeavor to be a guitar tech. And one is, you know, is traveling a good idea for you? You know, do you do well traveling? You know, because that I, I know right now we're in COVID and such, but, you know, there will be, you know, one day when this is over. So, you know, one is do, do I travel well? Uh, you know, am I able to handle that? Am I able to handle being away from my family and friends for extended periods of time? So, you know, and you might be with an artist that only tours in the United States, or you might be with an, an act that tours internationally. Uh, so you need to ask yourself that question. Uh, you also need to ask yourself, uh, you know, do I want to be a player or do I want to be a guitar tech? Because I caution people in that once you go to work as a guitar tech, then you will be seen as a guitar tech probably for most of your career. Very few people are able to make the transition from a guitar tech into a guitar player. And that's because people are quick to uh, pigeonhole people. And uh, it's like once you once you get known for that, then that's what you are. And when even when people hear you play, they might make a comment like, "He's a good guitar player for a guitar tech." And you will hear those things. Now, for some, that works out fine because they in, they tech for artists and styles of music that they don't care anything about. Like maybe uh, you know, I I know some guys that tech that they play around town doing straight traditional country music, playing a Telecaster into a twin reverb, playing clean, and then they go, you know, tech for modern acts, you know, that are all playing, you know, Gibsons and PRS guitars with overdrive. And, you know, and it's it's a gig, and they, they do it well, but, you know, they're able to tech for these guys because it's so different than what they want to play. I think the rub comes in when you are teching for an artist that you wish you were playing for. And uh, that's one of the rubs that I experienced. So, you know, when I was working for Brad Paisley, now Brad was very kind to me and he treated me fantastically. So I, you know, I hope this is not taken as in any way a slight on him. You know, this was my own issue. Uh, you know, I loved Brad's music. And, uh, and so it was hard to, uh, to be there, you know, working on, on guitars and doing all these things, doing all the hard work associated with gigging, but then not getting to play. Now he did let me play a lot, you know, whenever we weren't doing regular shows, when we were doing the Opry and we were doing television things, I would get to play with the band and I'd play six string bass or mandolin or all sorts of other things, just play an additional part, not just playing along. So that's a huge, you know, consideration, you know, before you even think about uh, being a guitar tech is, you know, is this something that I can enjoy doing or is this something where I'm always going to be thinking, I wish I was up there on stage playing? Uh, I will say that it was uh, after, you know, I, I kind of got off the road you know, after Brad. And then I ended up having to go back out on the road for a while because, I, ne frankly, I needed the money. And I worked with Carrie Underwood for about eight months. And that was my last teching gig. And that was when Sean Tubbs was in the band. And, uh, and that gig was really fun and easy. And, uh, and part of it was because 
I mean, I have, there's, I have no problem with Carrie Underwood's music, but I didn't want to play that music. And so I had no desire to play in the band. And, uh, but yet I really enjoyed listening to them. I, you know, they were wonderful players and uh, who doesn't want to hear Sean Tubbs play guitar? I heard his in-ear mix you know, every night and every night he was adding things that weren't on the record and, uh, and that were amazing. And it, uh, it, <laughs> in fact, I, I was, I was so, I was, became kind of such a Sean Tubbs fanboy while being his, his tech that, uh. I would, I would, you know, get other players that were around and give them my in-ear monitors and, you know, my little you know, earbuds and say, listen to this, listen to how good he is. And I think I did that once with Jeff King and Jeff King's a session guy here in town. Who's a phenomenal player. And, uh, I'm sure he was saying, why, why are you pushing this other you know player on me? But, uh, anyway, Jeff's a great guy. So all, uh, important considerations. So then you also have to think about, okay, so you've, you've asked yourself those questions and you're just like, yes, I want to be a tech. Well, okay. So then you have to ask yourself, you know, what kind of tech gig do you want? Do you want, you know, are you trying to be the tech for a star or for sidemen? Because it's a completely different kind of gig. Uh, you know, a, a sideman gig is pretty low stress. An artist tech gig is pretty pretty stressful because of how much pressure is on the artist. So if you're a tech for, you know, Clapton or John Mayer or Brad Paisley or Keith Urban or, you know, anyone that's a known artist guitar player, you know, being a tech for them is a very, uh, it's a very high pressure, high stress thing because, uh, you know, when the guitar messes up, which inevitably it's, it's going to mess up at some point, it throws off the show for the player, you know, for the artist and it throws off their rhythm and that's, and that's tough for them to recover from that and keep going. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot of pressure there. So that's a, you know, a big, uh, you know, you know, a big consideration. Another thing that you need to think about that uh, I've kind of hit on before, but you really need to realize that this is a, it's very much a service position. And I, I don't want to use the word servant, but I think a lot of guitar players that I've even interviewed, like session guys, will say, you know, being a session player, you know, you're in a service industry. That's true, but there's a whole nother level to service and, and kind of being a servant when your whole work is to make someone else look good. And that's the point of being a guitar tech. Your job is to not get glory and to make sure that someone else gets all the glory. So there's a level of humility that's involved and that's tough. So, you know, you have to take pride in the fact that you helped make a great show. And so when when we had a great show, you know, with Brad Paisley, yeah, absolutely. I felt, you know, I felt great you know, afterwards that I had done a good job and I had helped a really great show come off. The guitar sounded great. Brad played great. He was inspired by a good feeling you know, instrument and great tone. And that's what you have to take, uh, take your pride in. Uh, also hit upon like, if you want to be a guitar tech, how do you, how do you get, how do you get there? Well, you need to get to know crew guys. You need to get to know, uh, the production manager for a band and you need to get to know, you know, guitar techs and you need to put it out there that you're wanting to do that. And you need to have someone that, uh, you, you need to be able to prove yourself to somebody and you need to have, you know, there's certain skills that you need to have. You need to be able to string guitars well, to stretch the strings well, to intonate instruments, to do, you know, basic setup work, to do, you know, emergency nut work and things like that. Like you might have a guitar that there's only one of and, you know, the nut has a has a problem, the, the slot's too deep and maybe you have to you know, sand off some of the nut material and mix it with super glue, put it in the slot 
and then make a new uh, make a new slot in there. That's just something to get by until you can take it take the guitar until the instrument can be taken back to you know a, a a real repairman and they can you know put another nut on there or something like that. But there's all sorts of things. I you know I had to refinish the back of a neck because Brad Paisley took all the finish off. And I used you know super glue and smeared it on there, and then uh, and then you know used uh, you know some really light you know some really fine grit sandpaper to sand it down, and ended up you know working great. And I've I've done that you know done that multiple times. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of ingenuity, and being uh, having the connections, meaning just being willing to make phone calls and figure out how to do things, and that's a that's a big part of it too, is just saying. You know, uh, I don't know how to do that, but I'll, I'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, calling whoever you need to call. And, of course, you need to have soldering skills. And, uh, you know, and those are, uh, you know, those are what will uh, keep you going. And having a good attitude and understanding that part of your job is kind of uh, being a bit of a cheerleader, too. And uh, making the people that you are working for feel good and have a good time. You know, because then they're going to want to keep working with you because there's so much of working together that's about attitude and about being, uh, you know, lifting people up instead of bringing people down when you're around them because then people want to work with you. So those are, uh, those are some, uh, some, uh, you know, some of the, the points on, on being a guitar tech, um, you know, there were a lot of, a lot of fun things about being a guitar tech and having an excuse to contact all sorts of people and companies and such is, is just a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and, and being, uh, you know, having those people as guests, you know, backstage, you know, for me, you know, of course it was fun having, uh, Sterling Ball, you know, the, uh, the former, uh, CEO of Ernie Ball. I think his son Brian is now the CEO, but uh, like having Sterling Ball backstage and him telling stories about uh, Albert Lee and uh, touring with Eric Clapton and things like that. I mean, those are, you know, those are fun, you know, getting to hear those stories and uh, getting to be around those guys. So there's a, there's a lot of fun things about it. There's a lot of hard things. There's very long days and, uh, and again, you know, very little glory. You know, it's a, uh, you know, you, have, you know, the day starts, you know, early and sometimes it goes till late in the day. And that's, uh, that's the way it is. And especially if you're teching for an artist, you're probably going to be, uh, you know, involved in the recording of albums. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I, I worked on, uh, Brad Paisley's Mud on the Tires and, you know, I was there every single day and yet I didn't appear anywhere on the credits. Now they, they fixed that with the next album, but it was because that's not really something that's thought of, you know, with, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, album credits and things like that. They don't think about, you know, the, the guitar tech that's almost like a, another assistant engineer on, uh, on sessions. So, yeah, so there's, there's hard parts. So, but, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, it can be a lot of fun if you have the right attitude and, uh, and you just have the right expectations. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And I hope you will uh, think, think about, you know, if you're uh, wanting to be a guitar tech, you know, if you want have additional questions, you can certainly uh, reach out to me. Also, I've had a lot of uh, questions recently that have been emailed to me about people either selling their instruments or buying instruments and they've wanted me to help in authenticating things or my advice on a purchase, you know, whether something is, is real or not. And I am happy to do that. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, be, uh, be courteous to me. And also, you know, I appreciate you either hitting the tip jar or, or buying something from the store. You know, if I'm going to spend time, you know, helping you out doing that. And that's what people have done so far. And I appreciate that. So I just want to throw that out there. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.